Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we have something extremely special. World champion, Italian champion, Giacomo Tomola going out diving today. What do you expect from today, Giacomo? Today, I expect you to make something. <laughs> <laughs> to shoot some fish. Yes, I know. To shoot some. Yesterday you shoot, but I want you to shoot something uh, special that you will remember when you go back to England. Maybe a Dentex. Right. Um, also today, Giacomo is going to be answering all the questions that you sent in on Instagram and YouTube. So. We'll be doing that a little bit later throughout the day between the dives, but for now we have to get in the water and actually shoot some fish. The first place we are heading is a pinnacle that comes up to 46 meters and slopes off into 70 or 80 meters. A few days ago it was loaded with fish on the sonar, but first, question time. Well, question number one. Yeah. What do you consider more important, depth and dive time or species knowledge and attraction? Uh, species knowledge and, uh, and environment knowledge. What is the best advice you could give to a beginner spearfisher? Uh, don't rush, always step by step and uh, the success will come. What keeps you motivated to keep diving? A competition for now. I, I like very much this and so I'm uh, most of the time in the sea thinking of making, me, making myself better. After Giacomo has a quick warm-up dive to 30 meters, we're heading to the pinnacle. Perfectly still and relaxed on the way down. The seagrass is a testament to the clarity this water has, allowing light to penetrate down to nearly 50 meters. Sadly, the current had changed from two days ago and not much life was found on this spot. A strong message showing that species and environment knowledge is far greater than the ability to dive 46 meters. The next stop is a shipwreck in around 38 meters. Sadly, the sonar was not giving us great news, but it's always worth checking out wrecks. It was nice to get a look at the wreck as the water was a bit cleaner than yesterday. This is exactly the kind of place in the Mediterranean you'd expect to find gilthead sea bream or dentex hanging around. Once again, depth and dive time are irrelevant if there aren't any fish around. Using the sonar on a boat is one of the greatest tools you can use to find areas holding fish. What is your favorite fish to shoot? Uh, white groupers. White grouper, okay. Uh, has there ever been a time when spearfishing that you thought this is the end of Giacomo de Mola? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what uh, is your favorite size spear gun? Uh, 90. Which direction do you look for the current with a guato? Do you look into the current or down current? No, I prefer to go with the current. The best dry training that spearfishers can do, you think? You can make uh, walking and uh, keeping your uh, apnea. Apnea walking, yeah. yeah. This is the best for dry. It can, can be good. Okay. Yeah. Let's go find some more fish. <laughs> yeah. Hydration is key to performing at any physical activity, especially spearfishing. But drinking a heap of water on the day isn't enough. The days leading up to a dive are just as important. You don't expect to perform after a hangover, so why would you expect to be hydrated the day after not drinking much fluid? These two are like a well-oiled machine. Another pinnacle here, which is around 35 meters deep and is a hot spot for Dentex. Giacomo is armed with his double band 105 for the Dentex. Once again, the boat approaches the spot, engine in neutral, final breaths, and he's off.
a beautiful Dentex has decided to come in for a look. And there's proof that he is human after all. When I was going down, I, I saw him going down on the, the drop off, and then I, I stopped. He was coming, but then was far, and then he come, come, to, and, and go, and I tried, but it was too far. Nah. It's always easy to shoot fish in Greece, isn't it, Jacobo? Ah, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> As an experienced diver, what is the best way to improve to a champion's level? Uh, needs uh, needs uh, a lot of commitment and uh, and every day, every day thinking, consistency. Any tips on catching amberjack, Richola? Uh, you can go in the blue and uh, when you are going down uh, you don't not, don't doesn't need to be too much uh, too much um, weight and uh, and you can uh, put your body horizontal and go down in this way when should you stay silent and when should you make a call in hunting dentex i think you should stay in silence uh, when you see the fishes and uh, in the beginning, you, you should stay silent because they can come. After that, if you see that you are there and the fish are very far and uh, they are not uh, going to come, you will make the, the noise. What fish do you dream of catching? Uh, now I, I dream to catch uh, Ombrina. So. Ombrina. Okay, Ombrina. <laughs> do you prefer a roller or conventional spear gun? I prefer conventional. Last one for this session. What will you cook tomorrow, Giacomo? Uh, the lion fish that uh, baked you. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in the day, I was shooting some lion fish, and as I was cutting off the spikes, I managed to get my thumb a little too close to the dorsal spikes and copped some of the venom through my glove into my thumb. Luckily for me, I think most of the venom is in the tips of the spikes, and it was just a dull burning sensation for an hour or so. Then I was fine. With the fishing being a little quiet compared to yesterday, we decided to try the same rocks where Giacomo got the dusky grouper yesterday. Giacomo, what has happened? Uh, I, I dove in the same spot uh, of yesterday <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it was a totally different condition. The water is, da is it's white. It's sure. white, yes, it's, uh, it's dark. And uh, it was not that text was uh, one very small grouper in the, in the edge. I said, no, I don't shoot it. And I go back to the hole, the other hole. And uh, outside in the sand, there was a big uh, white grouper. But I was far, I was quite far. And I try, try, try. I was at the end also the, of the dive and I, I shoot it and he went inside the hole. With the, <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. With the spear? Uh, you, you shot the fish? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you think you might get it? We might get it, yeah. While we wait for this white grouper, while we, <laughs> after you've just shot, what model of Pathos spear gun do you use for cave hunting and what size? Uh, I use uh, the, the laser, carbon, and, uh, and Saragos. In sizes between 75, 82, 90. What is the most memorable fish of your career and why? In, in normal fishing, I remember, I remember the one very huge fish that I catch that was an amberjack and that was 57 kilos. And uh, we actually was, uh, was diving with, we were three buddies and uh, in the same dive we went down and we catch three amberjacks, it was crazy. I'm a recreational diver since I was six years old, but have my limit of around 22 to 25 meters. What is the best way to train to get to the next level of 30 meters of spear fishing? Uh, I think that uh, deep spear fishing is, uh, is really mental. So I advise to, okay, training the body, but, but uh, train the mind. How do you balance the free diving and spear fishing at great depths and what do you do to make sure your own safety and reduce the risk of blackouts? You always need to think that uh, 
you need to keep uh, like a reserva, uh, like a, a little bit of air that uh, for for any problem that can happen uh, before uh, starting the the going up. Uh, sure, leave the bottom. I mean, so you don't push yourself until the limit, never. Okay, what is your personal best freediving constant weight? Ah, uh, my personal best, uh, I did uh, so, some years ago when I was competing in freediving and uh, it was like uh, 2005, 2006 and I did uh, uh, 85 meters. As you are facing the next World Cup in Spain in different waters than the Italian ones, how are you preparing differently and what? how do you think you will go in this World Cup? Uh, it will be very tough for us and uh, I will try to go at, if, at least one time in, uh, in spring uh, in the ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean and uh, try to, to make this kind of fishing and then uh, and the scouting some days before to get used this but it will be very tough for us. Due to the dust in the hole from the white group of going inside, we decided to leave the fish for a while to settle down so it could be retrieved. We hit some shallower spots and I managed to find some fish. It's always a gamble knowing which direction to face when you hit the bottom with no current. I can see to my left the Dentex coming, but I don't want to spook them by waving the gun too much. Then of course as soon as I move my gun to where they are, they come from where my gun was already pointing. Not exactly the big one I missed yesterday, but nice to know I can still shoot them. Giacomo returns to the white grouper that is holed up at 35 meters, but it's not a simple extraction. With my head like this to fight the fish, and I saw the head of the fish. Yeah. With the head, with one head, the head. I was having one head in the head and put the shaft in the head, and then poof. You still attached. A few more dives, and he brings the enormous white grouper back from the depths. Beast. Despite me not being able to get down to the bottom to film the action, I was still in such awe of this fish that he had just captured. Repeated dives to 35 meters, second shots via braille, and then recovering the equipment safely. Truly a pleasure to witness. Uh, uh, Giacomo, how many dives did it take to get this fish? Uh, this was quite difficult, eh? <laughs> because we leave it uh, inside for a uh, half hour, something like this, and then we went again. This is your first shot here? Yeah, it was a bad shot because it was out the fish and uh, was running inside the hole and uh, I took the shot from far and uh, but it was okay, it was okay. And the second one, I was like this, touching and I was not seeing nothing, it was all dust, touching the head and try to make a second shot. And you, you, you basically did it uh, with braille. Yeah. <laughs> And then another dive to get the first gun. Yeah. Oh, hold that fish up. That is a gorgeous fish. And this is your favorite fish. Yeah. But not today. Not a fun one today. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, Peloponeso is uh, is an amazing place at the end. I, I was saying to you, okay, it's difficult, it's difficult, and, all, and it's a very difficult place to, to fish because you can swim for hours and you don't see nothing or very difficult fishes and at the end, you have the magic happen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing.
We've had a fantastic day out diving today, had a lovely dinner cooked by Maria and Mila. I acknowledge the chefs, thank you very much. But we have a few final questions just to get through before we wrap up this video. So question number one, do you think someone new to spearfishing would benefit from a free diving class? Definitely. Yes? Yes, because uh, a spearfisher is a free diver because we are superfishing in the water and we are superfishing in deep water. And so you need to learn the basic of this. Giacomo, is it true that you started your freediving career fishing for mussels on the Conero Riviera in Ancona? Yes, actually it's Riviera del Conero, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is true. Uh, when I was a child, I started there with, uh, in shallow water and uh, trying to, to catch this. Perfect, okay. How do you spot a good area for fishing? Ah, I start with the uh, fish finder and uh, um, I see some life on the fish finder. This is basic because uh, uh, if it doesn't have life, uh, probably the spot uh, is not so strong. Okay, perfect. Do you shore dive? I shore dive, yes, sometimes I like it. Yeah. Yes, I don't do it very often, but uh, in winter, sometimes I go for, uh, for sea bass. And, yeah. Okay. Where is the best place for spearfishing in Greece? Ah, there are, many, <laughs> there are many good places. I think that the islands of uh, South Aegean on the Dodecanes the the kinds of side in the east, southeast Aegean are very good. Spaghetti or linguine? Spaghetti, definitely. <laughs> uh, does it cost a lot to go to a championship? Do you need to pay for attendance and do you need to pay for the boats? Uh, yes, yes. It's uh, something that uh, if you don't have a um, federation that uh, that at least uh, pay for some part uh, of these expenses, it, it is expensive. Okay. And how, how should you try and get used to new depths if you want to try going, say, from spearfishing at uh, 20 meters to 30 meters? Free diving or...? You can also do spearfishing and also doing free diving. And the basic rule is uh, never go to your limit, so then always stay a little bit up of your depth limit and stay there. So make an, an ambush or, or if free diving, you just stop there. And uh, the day later, you go a little bit more down, a little bit more down, and step by step, you, you gain it. Slowly. Yeah, very slowly. Okay. And what is your advice for anyone that is currently spearfishing at 10 meters but wants to? progress to 20 meters? Uh, to be in the water as much as he can. This is something to the people to understand. I was in the water from when I'm, I was 16, probably, to, from 16 to 25, 26 years old. I was in the water practically not every day, but one day yes and one day no, for all the year. Okay. So this is so a, lot, a lot of time. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. How do you break past that mental barrier of not only having a long breath hold, but fighting a fish like today with the white grouper, you've got lots of things going on. How do you mentally manage it? Yeah. Uh, you need to manage the problems that you will have down in the surface. So before we, before going down. And we was together in the boat and we were saying, okay, now I will make this and, and later this and this. And if you can make it in the same dive, okay. If you cannot make it in the same dive, you just make one work after the other work after the other work. So you, you think better on the surface. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you think better on the surface because in depth, our brain doesn't work in the same way and it is all, all more slow. And so you can take uh, wrong decisions. Okay, perfect. What is the best skill to learn in spearfishing, you think? The best skill to learn is, uh, I think, to understand uh, 
what is going on with the, the currents, the fish uh, and the environment. This, I think, is the best skill. Do you pass on the first shootable fish or do you hold out for a bigger and better fish? <laughs> We have this question in Italy too. You you go for more for for a lot of fish or you go for just the big one? Uh, look, um, I like to shoot during my day. So uh, it depends also, also in in which period of of your life you are. Uh, so there is a period that I was want to shoot only the big fish, and so I was waiting. Other other periods of my life that I was want to shoot more so it's it's not a question that is forever okay it changes it's, it's changes. it changes yes okay i think everybody out there will agree that it's been a very educational day today for everyone watching with all your questions so thank you so much for taking the time You're to welcome. do this and um, it was amazing to dive with you and see you in the water it's not like anything i've ever seen before it's it's given me a lot of inspiration of the potential that spearfishing has. So thank you very much. And everybody out there, if you want to find out more about deep spearfishing, the masterclass is at professionalspearers.com. So you can check that out if you want. If not, I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. So we'll see you somewhere on the next adventure. Thank you for watching. And thank, thank you for coming out. Thank you to come to us. Mmm. My perfect profile. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Broke three times. <laughs>